Uh, good morning and welcome. I'm Patrick Nash. I'm the chairman of Burton Port Welcome Centre Society. Um, our welcome centre here uh, is a volunteer organisation um, and it is here to welcome all our visitors from all over the world uh, and particular people visiting the Wild Atlantic Way. Our community-based centre is run by volunteers and um, is um, all the goods and all the items that come through the centre are all by local artists and handcrafters. The centre is a beacon for uh, all our visitors down here in Burton Port uh, and we welcome everybody with an open heart and a, and a fresh cup of tea uh, when they come in. Um, the centre uh, has grown in the last three to four years uh, and we are uh, we plough all our profits back into the community, so we are developing the centre really for everybody that comes to visit us. Um, and we give you all a very warm welcome. We have four museums here. We have the Maritime Museum, um, we have a Railway Museum, we have um, a shop uh, and a bar, and we also have an old um, artefacts uh, agricultural uh, community shop in there as well. So we wel basically welcome everyone here um, and of course we rely on all our visitors to come and support <laughs> our community venture. Um, we basically plough money back into the community as I said earlier and um, we put flowers into the community, uh, we do all the strimming around the area and we have a number of key projects that we develop and we also plow a lot of money back into the local community for local charities um, and of course we're now uh, welcoming some of our visitors here from Pakistan and um, we hope they're going to enjoy their experience here. Thank you very much. I've done it before, yeah. Yeah. Hello, this is the Railway Museum and of course Burton Port, uh, Burton Port was indeed, um, had a railway here up until uh, the early 40s. Um, our port here in Burton Port was a strategic port from the 1700s and um, in order to advance the port in terms of communication um, we the, the fish uh, eventually went on on the railway which was built. This particular uh, uh, item here is called the bogey and this bogey is actually sitting on the rails of the original railway that was here back in 19, uh, the early 40s. Um, so historically, um, all the fish would have been put into barrels here, and uh, the fish would, would then have been put on, the, put on the train, and from the train then it would basically go up to Straban and across into the north of Ireland and eventually into the UK. What you have here, is the original form of, um, of transport between the islands and this is what was known as the curragh and these were all handmade um, and this particular one is a famous one because it was built by a local parish priest um, and in the, in, the, uh, in the boat there is a note that says God's work is never finished um, and he hasn't quite finished it but one day he will finish it. What you also have here then is a, a lot of memorabilia of our fishing industry and some of the famous boats um, that caught fish off our coast here. Um, as you can appreciate, the seas off the coast here are, are raging and can be extremely mild. So unfortunately we have lost lives from the local community here, some very brave fishermen who, who went down uh, in the sea. And we do have a memorial garden here down in Burton Port uh, to, uh, to, in remembrance of all those brave uh, sailors that, that, that died here. Um, over here you've got some of the local catches um, and you'll actually see some of the nets with, full of the herring um, that were caught here. Um, and in particular you can see uh, some of the nets uh, uh, with, with the herring in. And you'll also see um, the nets were uh, maybe twice the size of the Eiffel Tower in Paris when they went into the sea. And we also have one of the largest uh, brown crab uh, in the world here. Um, and they reckon he was about uh, over three kilos in weight. And he uh, was about uh, 40, between 25 and 30 years of age when he was caught. And he was donated to us by... Um, 
on loan by Neil and Caroline Ward from Tully Island um, uh, from their father in remembrance of Neil's father who died. He's two years dead today, so we remember his father, uh, Patsy Neil Kit Ward. So thank you very much for that. Um, then moving fast forward into our other museums, we then have uh, a museum of uh, agricultural life we have a Museum of Agricultural Life, and this is a, one of the typical homesteads that would have been in Ireland um, going back uh, from the 1800s um, up until the mid-1950s. Um, you, would, you would have a water pump, um, Belfast sink here, um, the fireplace, the be a roaring fire here. Um, we have Seamus here in the corner who looks after who looks after uh, the building for us. And we also have then um, some of the implements that they would cook on in the open fire. And you can see up here, we have the horseshoe and we have, uh, we have some, uh, some cookery implements that they would use. The old radio was very, very important uh, because that was, that was in every house. Um, and of course, they would have their best china uh, in, in case in a cabinet. Um, in here we would have a lot of farming implements and these are the old churns. Um, this is the churn that would sit on the table here and they would put milk into it and make butter. Uh, this is another churn and then we have another churn down here. What you also have here then is you have all the horse and donkey tattle um, that would be put on the, on the animals in the fields. Um, and this was a typical cart, and this cart particularly is over 100 years old. And this is an implement that, that they used to plough the fields. So this would be attached to the horse, and that would make the drills in the fields, uh, so they would sow, uh, so they would sow their, their, their mainly potatoes uh, and their crop up here. Uh, we're then moving forward. We're now moving forward in here now to... Uh, the shop um, and typically in Ireland you would have a shop and you would have a bar um, and that is a typical bar and a shop uh, and you would then get your groceries and then you would have a bottle of beer and then you would go home in the evening um, and, um, and then what we also have is some old fashioned push chairs um, and memorabilia um, we have another radio here um, and then we would have an oil can uh, people would get their oils uh, fr from the shop as well so um, so you would basically get everything here this particular is uh, is an item it's called a, a famine pot so in 1845 there was a big famine in Ireland uh, caused principally on the basis of an economic decision and we lost a large proportion of the population. But these pots were sent from England um, to make soup to feed the hunger and the starving. Uh, and unfortunately many, many people died um, and the population of Ireland halved um, to, from about 8 million down to about 4 million. Um, in, in particularly up here, a lot of people died of the fever because they got cholera uh, from the disease from the water. Um, so uh, basically, that's it. We have got some famous football ballers here. This is Packy Bonner, who is the Irish goalkeeper, and he's from uh, Cough Glass here. Uh, and of course, he's one of the local heroes. And of course, we have Daniel O'Donnell, who is a world renowned singer, and he's from Kinkashla. Um, and we have a lot of uh, famous artists from this area as well. That, 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 uh, we've got uh, Lisa McGill, uh, we've got Kate Gallagher, and we've got a number of uh, great artists here. Martin Durgan, who are great artists, and we display all their work in the, in the, in the exhibition centre. So we would encourage you to come to Burton Port on the Wild Atlantic Way and view all our museums uh, out here. And of course, we, have a, we display a large a large items of local crafted items and of course we have some fantastic um, dried seafood um, from Manus McGonagall which is uh, which goes all over the world so we have sea spice dulse corrigan moss so it's well worth the visit here down to Burton Port and thank you very much okay
Um, um, I'm just taking you now through the Welcome Centre. You'll see a large display of all handcrafted items in Donegal. Uh, these are the famous Donegal socks. We have some beautiful um, merino wool uh, knitwear. We have a lot of beautiful uh, uh, hand-knitted wear, uh, very talented people, all handcrafted children's blankets. Um, we have um, some beautiful hand-knitted coats, uh, all hand-done here in Donegal. We have some beautifully turned wood, wood items. Um, these are all beautifully crafted in Dunlo by a local uh, chap called Andy McGee who does some most beautiful artwork. We have some beautiful, unique um, sea glass pictures, which are all ca caught off the Atlantic coast here and put into beautiful picture frames. This is a sample here of some of the local artist works um, that are all, all hand-painted in watercolours. Um, so we have a large display of those. Um, we also have some beautiful handmade uh, crochet work by Katie Boyle um, and uh, we have a local blacksmith here that makes blacksmith items uh, and that's all, that's all done here so I'm just going to give you an example of that. and that's a hand beaten cross for example all, all hand beaten here uh, over in Anagre and then we come to our large display of beautiful crafts uh, these are done by uh, Sharon Patterson, uh, they're all unique and all, all hand pieces and then we come along our artist section here uh, uh, we have some beautiful uh, pieces of uh, Celtic work uh, by Sharon Patterson and then we have some beautiful watercolours uh, and artist work by a lot of our local artist people so uh, this is Kate Gallagher uh, this is Shirley O'Hyma, she does some beautiful watercolours. Uh, there's a beautiful Irish cottage. Um, beautiful piece of artwork by Martin Durgan, and this one, this particular piece is called Where, Where Sheep May Say uh, Grace Safely. Um, and then coming down the centre, we then have some. Locally handmade hand uh, chocolates, locally made jams and mustards. Uh, this is beautiful sea veg, dulse, the corrugine moss, which is very healthy for you, all natural, all caught off and produced on the coast here. We have some beautiful Irish bog oak, um, which is up to four or five thousand years old, that comes out of the bog, that is all, all picked and prepared and sold here. Um, and then we have some beautiful um, work. This is a beautiful piece of artwork by Lisa McGill. Um, and this piece is called Sea Rage. Uh, and Lisa is renowned here in Donegal uh, for her artwork. And of course, what we also then have is some beautiful tapestry work done by Shirley O'Heimer as well. I'm now moving out. We have a section here for reading. Uh, all these items are donated by the local community. Um, people can come in and have a read and of course enjoy a nice cup of tea with us. Moving outside. Uh, moving outside, we also have uh, an area where people can come uh, and relax when, the, when we have nice, some nice warm weather here. And um, uh, people can view. We have some local projects coming on, on board here now and we have a, a number of ladies uh, who are sitting around the bar uh, and these will all be planted with flowers very, very shortly. So this is uh, Burtonport Welcome Centre. So you must put it on your list and you must uh, give us an opportunity uh, uh, with a visit from yourselves and you'll get a warm welcome uh, in, in, in Burtonport. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.